Sickness is no joke. Imagine the feeling when you're stuck in bed and your temperature's rising, your nose is flowing quickly with fluid, and all you can think about is just going to sleep. Your body's not functioning properly. You see, when we get sick, we can't actually live to the full. And not only if it's me, but even if it's someone else who's close to me, sickness has a way of taking a hold of our lives and squeezing out all of the good stuff. I remember when I visited a friend once in hospital, he was on his last legs with his battle with cancer. And as I sat there and looked at him in pain, I didn't have anything to say. I mean, what can I actually do to change a situation? And he turned to me, he held my hand, and I'll never forget it. He just said, I'm so glad that you're here with me. You see, dealing with sickness, it's not just about having the pain removed. It's not just about recovering straight away. It's also about appreciating how we're in this together. COVID-19 has put us on a pandemic scale all across the world. Hundreds of thousands of positive cases have taken place. And even here in New Zealand, this is becoming something that's out of our hands. So I suppose the question remains, how do we deal with this? Are we gonna catch the coronavirus as well? And what about those who are more vulnerable in our communities? This is a serious thing. And in addition to catching COVID-19 as a possibility, I wanna point you to a different type of catch we can have. That even in the face of sickness, we can be catching hope. This means that when it comes to dealing with being stuck in our beds or feeling rotten, there's a deeper experience that God wants for you and for me. You see, He not just wants to heal us on the outside, He wants to heal our hearts. Today, we're gonna to come to a place in the Bible where Jesus meets three unnamed people. He heals them in amazing ways, but the beautiful thing is He does it specifically so that they're healed on the inside too. Let's open God's word and see how he wants to take us through this journey of sickness and still be catching hope. The first person we meet is someone who was stuck in social isolation. We can identify with him a lot because this is the kind of situation we're in right now. We can't go anywhere. We have to stay indoors. And even if we're sick, we have to live with it. So open your Bibles with me to Mark chapter five. This is a guy who was so sick that no one wanted to be around him. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Now, when the Bible describes the scene, we see Jesus, that's he who came out of the boat, they came to a new place and as soon as he steps out, they're met by someone who no one usually wants to talk to. The Bible describes him as someone who's got an unclean spirit. Now we would usually say someone who's really pretty anxious, maybe someone who's mentally unwell, but the Bible says that he was unclean, as in no one goes to where he is. He's stuck on his own, he's got to deal with it himself. But Jesus recognizes that when people are sick, we need to stick together. So verse three, who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even the chains. So this person's not only unwell internally, but he's also dangerous. He can't be bound up with chains. He's in a situation where he can't even control his own behavior. And so usually we'd say, well, that person's got to go to where they belong. But in the case of Jesus, he wants to step into his life and bring him to a new place. Now, what's beautiful is if you read the story, they have interaction. Because the man comes to Jesus and says in verse seven, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. So here we've got someone who can break chains, who can behave outrageously, but he recognizes who Jesus is. This is powerful because dealing with sickness 
It's not just about me going to the doctor and asking for the right medication. It's not just about sitting in bed and letting this virus run its course. It's about an internal need of reaching out to Jesus and finding hope on the inside. Jesus responded and said, come out of the man unclean spirit. And as the story is told, he sent what was 2000 evil spirits inside of him into a herd of pigs. This is a crazy situation of sickness and one that we may not interact with in our everyday life. But the powerful part is that Jesus not only wanted to be part of his life, he not only stepped out of the boat and went to interact with him and went to set him free, but he did something on the inside. We know that because the man then responded, who used to be breaking chains, who used to frighten the daylights out of people around him. And now he responded in verse 18 saying, and when he got into the boat, he begged who had been demon possessed that he might be with him. So the difference now is that this man who was stuck in life, who was socially isolated, he now found a reason to be connected. He now found an opportunity to find healing. And that was with Jesus. Perhaps you're in a place right now where you're becoming so anxious about the health state of the world. In this case, Jesus didn't heal the man externally. He healed what was happening inside of him. And Jesus wants to do the same thing for you. The next moment is where Jesus appears to be healing a young girl. Her dad came and asked Jesus to come to their home. And so sure enough, Jesus is on his way. He's surrounded by a crowd of people. And as he's making his way, people are touching him all over. His disciples are there. There are leaders. Jairus, the man whose daughter Jesus was going to heal was there. As he's making his way through the crowd, someone was there who also needed healing. Now this someone was a person who no one would usually talk to. Again, it's someone who's in social isolation. You see, in the time of Jesus, if someone was so sick that there was bleeding happening on the inside, they were called unclean again. As in, no one goes to see them, they can't be around a community of people. It kind of sounds like the way that we're stuck in this COVID-19 isolation stuff too. The Bible describes her as someone who is bleeding on the inside, but for 12 years. Imagine your life becomes so stuck that you can't be around people. You're in pain. There's something happening inside of you that you have no control over. And it's not just for a month. It's not just for a little while up to a year. It's 12 years. Now she's so brave that as the crowd of people are around Jesus, let's check out what the Bible describes she does. Read with me in verse 25. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. We just heard that. And had suffered many things from physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Notice here that for this lady, after she had been suffering for this amount of time, she had gone to every avenue. She had exhausted all of her resources to try and find hope. But maybe she was looking in the wrong place. Maybe she can't find hope just from having the right medicine or find hope from reading the right books or scrolling through the right social media uh, videos. Maybe hope could only be found in this man who had just arrived in town. Verse 27 says, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. I want you to imagine this, that you've got so many respectable people around Jesus and he himself is walking through. And here's this lady that as she's trying not to be seen, she's hovering through and just as she's crouching down, she can barely reach the bottom of his leg and she doesn't even touch him. She can't reach his shoulder. She can't even reach his foot. Instead, she just reaches the edge of his garment. This is really peculiar because for us, if we're wanting to hug someone, we want a hug. If we're wanting a handshake, we're not going to put our foot up. But she realized all she needed to do was to reach out to part of Jesus, 
to find a part of him where she can find hope again. And as she touched his garment, read what happens. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. This is amazing. The story of Jesus here is that when a woman simply reaches out and believes that all she needs to do is touch even just the hem of Jesus' clothes, that she's healed. And the Bible describes that immediately when that happened, she felt the sickness went away. She felt the blood was dried up and she was healed. A miracle took place here. Because in the case of Jesus, he didn't respond by saying, well, I'm just going to carry on with my day. No, no, no. Check out his response too. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around and said, who touched me? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? Interesting that the only person who knew what happened other than the woman was Jesus. Take note here that when it comes to a sickness that we can't deal with, it's not really something that we can find a quick answer from someone else. There are great support systems, great medical care services available, but at the end of the day, you need to reach out to Jesus yourself. Someone else can't do that for you. And I love Jesus's response. Who touched me? And his disciples, looking at the common situation, say, well, Jesus, there are lots of people around you. We're all touching you, I suppose. Everyone's getting a hug. But he's like, no, no. Someone just touched me because I felt like power came out of me. This is amazing. Because in the case of Jesus, when we do reach out and when we touch him, there's an exchange that takes place. We not just receive love, we receive the ability to deal with our sickness. Now, I'm not saying that if you reach out, if you lift your heart and pray today, that God is immediately going to heal you. Because in this case, the woman had been battling for 12 years and God could have healed her at the start of that journey too. But what he does promise is that when we start to reach out to Jesus personally, that power will be unleashed over our life. That is power to deal with it. That is power to be able to grow even in the midst of something that we have no control over. How about you? Do you want some of that power? Remember, this isn't about us becoming better or greater people. It's about the power of a relationship with the Most High. We're dealing with a situation today that's very similar to what this lady was struggling with. There are symptoms that are reflecting the coronavirus that we all need to be weary of. It can be shared by droplets in the air. It can affect our respiratory system in a huge way. And our children, those with weak immune systems, our elderly, they're highly vulnerable. So this is a serious thing. But in the case of the woman, she realized what our first response should be in the face of sickness. It's to reach out and to touch Jesus. So what about you? What would it cost for you to do the same and to reach out to the one who not only can heal, but can take our minds to a greater, more peaceful and coping place? So now a woman has been healed by Jesus, but it doesn't end there. Remember before the woman touched him, there was a father, his name was Jairus, who came and asked for his daughter to be healed. Now the cool thing is, Jesus doesn't forget about people. Sure enough, he deals with a situation right there and then, and that's a great lesson for us to learn in itself. But now he wants to continue on and go to meet Jairus' daughter. Now at this point, after the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years was healed, Jairus came back and he'd just gotten word from one of his servants. His daughter had died. And this part really hits home because all across the world right now, the virus isn't just infecting people, it's killing people. And even in the face of death, Jairus responded in kind of a, a usual way. It says in verse 35, still in Mark 5, while he was still speaking, 
Some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word, this is in verse 36, that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. I want you to see the contrast here because we've got real sickness that has actually created the worst result. When that happens, it squeezes out any ounce of belief we can have. But Jesus says, do not be afraid, only believe. As you're battling with sickness, as you're battling with watching others uh, be either afraid or have already caught part of this pandemic, Jesus says the same thing, only believe. You see, we serve a God who knows the end from the beginning. And while he's an amazing savior, a friend, the one who made everything, he's also our healer. And I want you to notice who he really heals in this story. He comes back to Jairus's house, even when Jairus said, don't worry about it. And people are crying there. It says in verse 38, then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult as in a crowd and those who wept and welled loudly. You can picture the scene. People are screaming. People are crying excessively. And so Jesus asked the question. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. This is remarkable because Jesus looks at a situation that looks like it's totally fallen apart. And when he sees that a house is filled with disbelief, they're crying because this young girl has died. He says, ah, 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 she hasn't actually died. She's asleep. This actually tells us what death really is. We hear a similar story with Lazarus in John chapter 11. But sleep means it's temporary. Sleep implies that someone's gonna wake up. Sleep means that Jesus is about to step in and call her. You know, in Psalm 30, it says something similar. It says, weeping may tarry through the night, but joy comes in the morning. So we may go through something hard, but wait, because when the sun rises, there's gonna be a joyous way that we've grown and that God has stepped in and healed us or in this case, has woken us up. So Jesus went into her room and in verse 41, it says he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Verse 42, immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 years of age and they were overcome with great amazement. Notice the words Jesus gave. He didn't say, hey, are you still there? Filled with hope, he says and speaks life to the young girl, arise. Now I imagine as soon as she woke up and it says the verse after that he commanded for her to have something to eat. Because when you eat, you know that someone's really alive, her body's working. So it wasn't just some random occasion. It wasn't something they were imagining. And in the case of this girl, she was now in a place where her family believed too. I imagine the crying would have stopped, the wailing would have been silenced, and a family, that is the family of Jairus, and all those who were in his house, were now in a place where they were healed as well. The powerful part of this story is not simply about a girl who was restored and brought back to life, which is incredible, but it's that her family were brought back to life as well. Perhaps you're in a place where your loved ones are being strangled with doubt at the moment, with fear, or the sickness has become a real thing. Jesus wants to step into your home or into the relationships you have with your close friends, and he wants to do the same, to silence the weeping, to bring the doubts to a halt, and to put us in a place where he can say to us too, arise. Just like how Jesus ministered to the girl's family who he rose from the dead. 
He transformed the life of the man who had an unclean spirit. And he brought such a remarkable faith difference to the lady who had been bleeding for 12 years. Jesus longs to bring the same impact to your life as well. There goes the story of a beautiful poet named John Donne in the early 17th century. And during the time of the Black Plague, life became so still for him. He started to actually resemble similar symptoms to what the Black Plague had instructed. So he made his way to the local hospital where people were getting ready to die. He admitted himself and as he sat there in the hospital bed, he heard the sound that broke his heart. A bell was rung every time someone died throughout that hospital complex. Ring, someone had just died. Ring, someone had just died again. It was the most painful noise and it brought him to a place that wrote some profound words. This is what he said. No man is an island apart from himself. We are all part of the same continent. And he goes on to say, Never ask for who the bell tolls, because it tolls for thee. So we should never be asking, oh, what's the latest stats of those people over there? Because what's really true is that when someone else is affected, so am I. The bell tolls for you and me as well. This is real. People are sick. The stats are increasing and there's no way for us to control it. But there's a beautiful response we can have from God's word. Jeremiah 17 and verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. Now what Jeremiah does here is he takes the need of being healed, of God saving us, and he places it in his hands. Sure enough, God longs for us to be in good health. And there's nothing more that he wants for us than to be in a saving and a healed relationship with him. But he's so much wiser than the circumstances and the time frames that are in front of us. So he says, God, you heal me and I will be healed. So we can say together today too, Lord, we know that you can heal us. We know that you can sort this out and I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna trust it in your hands. The amazing thing is we don't serve a God who is just distant watching. Remember Jesus came to this world and when he did, his life was broken too. He went to the cross and none of this was deserving. But he gave up his life as the most amazing sign. What an amazing savior. You see, the God who made everything, he also wants to walk through this life of bringing a remarkable healing change too. So are you willing to take the pain, to take the sickness and the circumstance we're in and to trust it to our healer? Let's pray. To our Lord who's in charge and who is so near, we join with the words of Jeremiah and say, Heal us and we shall be healed. Save us and we shall be saved. To all those who are stuck, who are feeling isolated, or who are under the pressures of sickness, we pray that you'll carry us and that you'll bring us through. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen.